Elliott. Nice shooting. 3.92. Welcome back to GTM. Today I'm here with my buddy from the LSO Instagram. And uh, we have two AKs. We have a Wasser and we have an OPAP. And we did a little comparison today. Neither of us are like super highly trained. Uh, we wouldn't consider ourselves experts in the AK world at all. Pretty much noobs. But we wanted to test these two out today. Um, they're actually both our dad's rifles. I just bought this one for my dad. And uh, we wanted to just kind of know about them compared to ARs a little bit, but mostly compared to each other and our, our experiences with them. So what did you like about your rifle today? Uh, well, I like a couple of things. The main thing I liked, uh, mine's a stamped receiver, so it's a little bit lighter. Yep. I did like that. Yep, um, I could tell it was lighter for sure. The other thing I like is the stock's a little shorter, and I like a short length of pull. Um, whether you got kit on or you just um, want to be closer to the set picture, I think uh, for me personally, I like that more. Um, yours uh, had a nice little comb, but I found that if you didn't have it just right, it slapped your cheek a little bit. Yep. Um, the other thing I did like about yours, though, was just the grip. Uh, it's just a better handle, and uh, even when your hands get hot and sweaty, it was just a better way to get a hold of it and control the recoil, mm -hmm. and so I like that a lot. That's just a make full. I don't even know which grip. It's a make full grip. Yep. So I did like that. Um, this is just a standard. Um, I do like just kind of the aesthetic, the you know original AK kind of look, AKM look. So um, fun guns to shoot. Ergonomics are a challenge. Um, yeah. You know, as we were trying to do some reload drills and stuff. But overall, fun gun to shoot. Uh, definitely nice to push your skill set and to try something new. Uh, you know, especially when you're used to an AK plat or an AR platform, mm -hmm. um, and just trying to do a little cross training. So I liked it overall. Yeah. With mine, um, I guess some of the things that I, I appreciate about this and comparing the two, uh, I like having this attachment. First of all, I'm going to start with this. The skid plate on the front, I like having a skid plate. So if I'm not going to have Picatinny, um, I want something on there that grips really well. And the different things that we're trying to rest on when we're negotiating around our little um, shooting track today, it just helps to have something there. Uh, the recoil AK isn't like... It's not the worst thing, but it does move the gun around. It, it's more like vibration. It vibrates a lot. This big old bolt, when it comes back, it does have a lot of mass to it. And the OPAP is a little heavier. And I actually like that about it for its own reason. Like if you're gonna be hucking a truck or hucking an AK through the woods for a while, this thing is way lighter. I don't know what it is about it, but it's stamped and it's, it's lighter for sure. And this one's heavier. So when you're actually shooting, this moves around a lot less is what I found. That could be in part something you pointed out, is that the muzzle device on this yeah. is the traditional AK muzzle device. And so it's got that little slant, and I would actually say it's it's almost overcompensating. It almost drives the gun down a little bit. And then you have a, a flat, I guess it's not a brake, it's just a, a, a flat end yeah. thread protector of some sort, something like that. I noticed that the grip is actually thinner and maybe a little different um, size on the forend. I could be wrong on that, but it seems like it's a little yeah, different. I think this is just a little bit smaller. Yeah, it could just be even the wood. Um, just a little different. I like this one, just because I am uh, I guess I'm a little bigger. Uh, I like the safety better on the Wasser. The Wasser gives you two shelves to get your finger in and actuate the, the safety. This one just gives you one plain shelf and it doesn't have any grip or serration on it. So it does uh, get a little slippery. Like it's it's about 90 degrees out today. It was super hot. We were sweating to death. And uh, when there's a little oil on it or it's wet or whatever, it's just, I don't know, it's firm, feels less broken in. And the detents are, I think they're closer together with this one, yep. but those are more functional. Like they're more defined. I had a little bit of trouble with mine just from time to time. But uh, I liked it. I guess the sights wise, I can't see any difference. They are different just slightly, but I can't see any difference in function. Um, it was hard to see them in the shadow today. AK sights are hard to see. Uh, other than that, I guess the stock, this is a slapper, but I've gotten used to it. So I just ride my face a little more forward. And this one seems to do pretty well. I, I do like the trigger in mine a little better. I felt like the Wasser was a little gritty. Like this, this, uh, this trigger has definitely almost like two stages to it when you pull it but they're fairly smooth. I feel like that one was a little more gritty in the first half of the pull or whatever. I don't even know what kind of trigger it is, but uh, I guess we could break them down and look at it. But the, there is a difference there. Um, the feel of the gun overall, this just feels heavier. It feels a little more solid. 
but I don't doubt the reliability. Both these rifles are 100% reliable, correct? Yep. We've only ever had magazine problems with like chintzy magazines. Um, so this rifle, it's probably in the neighborhood of a little under 2,000 rounds. I've had about 1,000 rounds with it. Um, that rifle, I don't know how many rounds you think have been through that rifle. I would say close to 1,000, if yeah. not 1,200. Yeah, and so completely reliable, and as far as we can tell, uh, accuracy-wise, here's where things got a little interesting. So the Wasser, today we, we did not set up a very good target at 100 yards, but you shot something like, we'll just take the thrower out, we'll say it was something like a 4-inch group with Wolf. We're shooting crap ammo, we're not shooting good like Barnum or whatever the, the name of the better ammo is. Usually hot shot is what I will shoot if I'm trying to shoot a little tighter. And uh, mine shot like a 6-inch group. And so I think you totally took the lead in uh, accuracy for that. We probably could replicate that several times over. But just as a throw it out there, see what happens with really dirty barrels. Neither of these barrels have been cleaned in over a thousand rounds, we know that. Yep. Um, action has been cleaned. But accuracy wise, it did get the, the upper hand there. Um, as far as hitting steel, so we have an A zone and then like a two thirds silhouette at a hundred yards. Um, I, I found that with this sights, when the rifle, the rifle came with, they were hitting off six inches. I had to adjust them. And now it's right in, uh, right where it should be adjusted at the 100 meter mark. They're hitting uh, the core. Yours, it looks like they could use adjustment, maybe just a little windage, yep. right? I think mine's shooting a little bit to the left at 100, so it's yeah. going to get pushed a little bit. But. Yeah. but elevation was true. It was, it was right there. And so as long as we did our part and now kind of knowing where the rifles hit a little bit, I think that A zone is very doable at 100 yards, as long as you can see it, um, is the whole thing. The rifle holds, you know, that, that size of groups at 100 yards, five shot groups, by the way. Um, the thing about both these rifles, they both have an optics rail. Um, so you can grab uh, something like this. I got a little Nikon 3 power and put it on here. The thing is, um, I didn't open it up. The thing is about these optics rails is most of them ride really high over the rail so you have to have like a little bit of a cheek riser or you just don't set your cheek on there it's not a big deal to me but something to notice so both of them will accept that uh i did notice that magazine release maybe it was the magazines i was using it seems like mine fits a little tighter than that one like they were they were more loose to come out um, it was easier to flick them out of that one than it was in this one but again if you're doing your part and you're flicking them really hard both of them work just fine um, yeah, I like the handle a little better than the original, but I, I don't know, the intention of these rifles might be a little different. This rifle is trying to stay ultra light, and this one's trying to be a little beefier, so they both, um, they're both fun. I don't think it made me an AK guy. Like, I don't think I'm totally committed to the AK platform, I'm not going to put all the time in there. I don't know, yep. what about you? I, I think uh, for training and just overall fun and plinking or whatever, mm -hmm. um, I think I would stay with the AR platform. Um, but I do think they're uh, just a fun gun to shoot and um, definitely pretty cost effective if you can't get out and train on, you know, um, some nicer AR ammo. This is a cheap way to get out there. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a fun platform to just kind of test your limits, get out of your comfort zone a little bit. So yeah. I like it for that. It was a little rough uh, in some of the practice. So we did a couple drills just to see what happened and there was basically no practice. There Maybe a couple runs, we did like two runs. Yeah, I think we did like two runs before we started for the day. So this was really a dry practice. The whole day is really what it was. And uh, we did, what was the first drill we did? We did um, uh, the running drill, right? So we did like a running drill. We did three rounds a piece on different targets yep. uh, on the move. And uh, your first run, it was 39, then you had 43. And my first run was 33 out of 32. And then we switched guns. And Dylan pulled the 38 and I pulled the 38. So we kind of ran the same time on there. And we really figured out where some of our weak spots are with the rifle yep. on the move. Like especially um, shooting while walking with that really primitive sight. Because I, I have to kind of move my face up here, the optic moves or, or the, uh, the front sight definitely moves around for a while. I could use some practice there. I don't know if you got any of that. Um, between the two rifles, we were getting hits though on the targets, uh, I would be comfortable fighting with this rifle at that distance of 100 yards, but I'd prefer an AR. Um, then we went uh, fast, we just tried to see how fast we could run the triggers, and I think we both can do better than this, but it is what it is. The uh, first time I got a 1.67, then I got a 1.8. Um, we tried to go really fast the first time, 
and we both had a hiccup in that for sure. And the second time we tried to go fast but intentional, keeping them within a, a clean silhouette. Um, and then your, your uh, first time you had two seconds, your second time being more intentional was three seconds. And so that was six rounds, right? Um, and then we did a little uh, drill with like some make practice, which you probably already watched in the video. And with that, um, your first time was a 6.98, a 5.21, and then a 4.58. So you definitely were like quite a bit increasing from one to one. So I think if you dedicated the time, yeah. you could cut down on those make changes quite a bit. Uh, but it took a lot of thought, you know? Yep. Yeah. And I think too, the system we have with AR platform right now, rifles is we have dedicated gear, right. dedicated kit to doing those things, doing reloads. Um, I got cargo pants <laughs> or the AK. So yeah. <clears throat> you get a little bit more uh, creative when you have something that you can't just stick in a, right. you know, a Kiwi or a, you know, a G Code mag pouch or something and you gotta just kind of roll with it. But, um, yeah. Plus think, these things, like the, the shape of them, pulling them out of your pocket, they definitely tend to hang up on stuff and uh, they're not as smooth out of the pocket. Uh, I actually run AR mags faster out of my pocket for sure. That could just be because I'm used to them, but these took a little bit of work. I yeah. Um, then I went uh, 3.92, I think that says 3.92, 4.71, 4.28. Um, and that was, uh, I don't know, I, I messed up a lot. We took our fastest three runs, we did it twice and we threw away the slow run and we did our fastest runs. And so I really don't know if I go that much faster than that, honestly. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty much maxed out because I have to think so much about it. I feel like it's really intentional to get that mag rocked in there and then go underneath and pull it back. And Dylan's left-handed, which uh, don't tell anybody, but we can definitely tell there's a difference between right and left-handed. Yep. Um, Especially actuating the safety yeah. because that's my support hand, so I gotta come back actuate the safety, get out, run the gun, and then if I want to transition somewhere, I gotta take that and kind of rock it and get yeah. out of my workspace. So it's a lot to do where um, on an AR, you can just flick it and you're good to go. So it's a little more challenging. Yeah, and I noticed like where uh, where maybe it costs you some time, you also have a makeup because you can rack it yep. uh, while you're right there with yep. the same hand. And it's a little funky as a right-hander to get underneath the gun sometimes, especially if you're wearing a sling. This was probably the, this is the hardest thing about the AK to me actually, is neg negotiating around a sling. And I don't like putting rifles down. Um, I don't like tossing them around or leaving them in the dirt even. I, I wanna hold on to it if I can. And when you're trying to do that make change and then rack it, a lot of times the sling can get in the way and do some dumb stuff. So I can see why guys run really simple slings on their AK. Yep. Overall, it was a good time. I like it. It didn't cost us very much, you know, for a few hundred rounds of AK today. Yep. Uh, super hot and sweaty out, so you might as well roll around the dirt with an AK. That's right. um, magazines are a different story. Magazines definitely can have trouble with AKs. I've had a lot of sandy AR mags that went longer than some of the ones I had here. I'm not running Circle Tens or anything really high quality. In fact, I'm running Tapco Poly mags and some other, uh, some sort of Bakelite. Those, I don't know, we had trouble with sand in them today. Yeah, I think it's funny because the AK is known worldwide for its reliability and kind of sloppy tolerances in the gun. And then you get down to the magazine and at least the magazine that, that I had uh, got a little bit of grit in there and it just locked up and so it's gonna need to get cleaned, but. Yep. Um, which I, we're running cheap mags, so that comes with the territory, I guess. Yeah. But. Yeah, so it was a good time. If you like this video, go ahead and hit like, share, subscribe, do all those things. Go check LSO out on Instagram. Um, if you want to see anything more about these rifles, maybe go ahead and post a comment down below. But otherwise, that's all we got for you. Thanks, guys.
those mistakes. Yeah.